Criminal Mischief is back, my friends. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey Marie and I'm your resident graffiti artist slash attorney. And thank you for all of you who subscribe to my channel that seeks to inspire professionals to live unconventional lives full of color. Today, we're gonna be talking about the laws in Philadelphia with regard to vandalism. Yes, we do have a cool name. Criminal Mischief is back, my friends. So without further ado, let's talk about the history of graffiti in Philadelphia. It's hotly debated. Hotly. Even though New York and Philadelphia are quite cool places, it's hotly debated whether graffiti started in New York or Philadelphia. Whether it was New York in the 1980s or if it was Philadelphia in the 1960s. Because 1967 was when the beloved Cornbread started tagging his name around first his youth development center. And I've heard uh, YDC is not so fun. But nonetheless, he was in kitty jail and he actually got his name because he kept pestering the cafeteria ladies to make him more Cornbread. Which I don't blame him. Cornbread is really great, especially with some chili beans. 10 out of 10. So he started drawing his name on YDC's walls. Then once he got out, he did something uh, incredibly outlandish. He spray painted the sides of a elephant, which I think is pretty dope if you ask me because I've never really thought about drawing on an animal. But at the same time, I just wonder if the poor little elephant, if he might have had some slight skin irritation. I mean, I just, I just get concerned about these things is all. So soon after Cornbread made his appearance, then you had Cool Earl. He started tagging the walls in Philadelphia and then soon it just kind of just took off Really. And so now they have a whole bunch of commissioned artwork. They also have different kinds of graffiti. They have graffiti knitting instead of spray paint. It's yarn. It's really bizarre. I mean, it's the coolest thing ever. Let's get into the law. The law that we're dealing with today is criminal mischief. And specifically, it is the statute 3304A4, my friends. It says, a person is guilty of criminal mischief if he intentionally defaces or otherwise damages tangible public property or tangible property of another with graffiti by use of any aerosol spray paint can, broad tipped indelible marker or similar marking device. Seems pretty straightforward, except we've got an issue with the indelible part. So the definition of a broad tipped indelible marker is in section 212-2, which says it's any felt tipped marker or similar implement which contains fluid, which is not water soluble and which has a flat or angled writing surface, half inch or greater. So we've got three things in this statute. We've got spray paint, we've got the broad tipped indelible marker, and we've got similar marking devices. Well, there was a case about this. If you've ever wondered what we do in law school, this is what we do, peoples. Oh, are you looking at me? Oh, okay. Um, what was the question? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, habeas corpus. Oh, this isn't criminal law? What class is this? Oh, wills. Oh, wills. Oh, a habeas corpus. Bring me the body, right? That's what the will said? That's what the, no. Yeah, I read. Yeah, let me, let me get my give my notes. Okay, these notes are for the wrong class. So, okay. Commonwealth versus Francis is a 1998 case, so I wouldn't take it for the law now. However, it is a good look into how the judiciary parses out these statutes. In Commonwealth versus Francis, we have a guy who was observed by the police using a paint stick to draw on a lamppost, which first of all, homie, you're right in front of the police. What are you doing? So what happened was he was sentenced. He was convicted of both criminal mischief and possession of crime instruments. He was sentenced to one year probation and 200 hours of community service. There's a lot of trash picking up, buddy. He didn't like that too much. And so he appealed because he said, well, now wait a minute, this paint stick isn't permanent. And that's what indelible means. So you've got indelible in the statute, but my thing isn't permanent, so I should get off scot-free, right? No. The court said, uh, sir, the statute says spray cans, 
indelible markers and other similar marking devices. It only put indelible on one. That seems to mean that the legislature didn't include indelible on all of them because some of them might not be indelible and therefore not permanent and therefore you, little homie, can fit right squarely into our statute and we can get you convicted. Thank you, sir, for your community service. So that's sort of how the judiciary kind of looked at that. We also have him being convicted of possession of instruments of a crime. He said, well, a paint stick, that's not possessing an instrument of a crime. I'm just possessing a paint stick. wrong -o. The court said, no, uh, that basically turns on the word commonly used in the crime. A paint stick is commonly used in graffiti. So you suck, continue to pick up my trash. Thank you, sir. The same appellate court said that razor blades and pool cues are not commonly used in murders. I guess they wouldn't be. I don't know. I just kind of thought there's only two things that you do with pool sticks. You play pool or you murder people with them. So now let's get to our favorite part, the punishment. The punishment really isn't that bad. So really for a city that had a lot of issues with graffiti, it's really not as strict as say Georgia, New York, but let's take a look at it. It says criminal mischief is a felony of the third degree if the actor intentionally causes pecuniary loss in excess of $5,000 or a substantial interruption or impairment of public communication, transportation, it is a misdemeanor of the second degree if the actor intentionally causes pecuniary loss in the excess of a thousand bucks or a misdemeanor of the third degree if he intentionally or recklessly causes pecuniary loss in the excess of $5,000. Wait, loss in the excess of $500 dollars my bad i added an extra zero or causes a loss in excess of 150 dollars for a violation of sub subsection a4 which is where we are otherwise criminal mischief is a summary offense that's that's really not that bad now i wonder i wonder how much painting an elephant would be worth? That's a good question. Would that be a felony or a misdemeanor? All right, so that's it. That is the vandalism laws of Philadelphia, criminal mischief in Pennsylvania. So if you guys like my content, please hit the dingy dingy bell and subscribe and do all the things. Like, subscribe, comment. Don't like, don't subscribe, don't comment. Be true to yourself and really think about what irritates an elephant's skin. Okay, bye.